This segment of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. If we were to go by what's indicated in its release, the Public Hospitals Authority wants this whole issue with junior doctors behind it. After all, the threat of strike action looms. But according to the PHA, there's a problem with paying out what's owed to the group. The doctors have reportedly shown a lack of compliance with the automated system for time and attendance monitoring. You see, according to the PHA, under the terms of the existing agreement, while junior doctors are eligible for double time pay for all holiday hours, there's a specific requirement for each junior doctor to adhere to all the PHA's policies, and that includes the use of its automated time and attendance system. The PHA has determined that as it stands, junior doctors have adhered very little to this policy, and that this in turn makes the task of confirming which employee is eligible for holiday pay near to impossible. In fact, the PHA argues that given this non-compliance, it's had to resort to offering an across-the-board holiday pay benefit to all junior doctors. Now, the PHA says it submitted its offer to the union last month and set a meeting date to discuss it. However, the doctors not only failed to show up, but failed to submit a counter-proposal. An outspoken Clico policyholder is calling on the government to live up to its end of the market. It was back in October that Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Peter Turnquist stood in the House of Assembly and announced the government's plans to make another $10 million payout to Clico clients before the end of the year. The figure budgeted was $10 million. Not much, if anything, has been said since, and that's what's distressing to Baptist Bishop Simeon Hall, one of thousands affected by the company's collapse several years back. I, I don't have the, out, the inside scoop on who did. I do, do know that uh, the meetings we've held at our church, uh, several persons got paid, some persons uh, were not. Now, we should also remember that it was the former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram, who encouraged policyholders to continue paying the policy. And I think that obligates any government uh, to fulfill uh, the promise of seeking to try to reimburse these persons uh, who are disadvantaged by this tobacco. Now, since Clico's fiasco, successive governments have made several payments. This should not happen. It shouldn't have happened before. You know, how do you get 60, 70 million dollars out of the country and the p authorities don't know? Someone really should have gone to prison for Clico. You know, we talk about investigation and this and that. Someone fell asleep at the wheel on this Clico thing. Bishop Hall again stressed the need for the government to introduce legislation to prevent large foreign companies from taking advantage of vulnerable Bahamians. Whenever this thing is over, I pray that it never happens again. Government should put in place the protection of its citizens to see that uh, these multi-million dollar companies do not exploit unsuspecting Bahamians. Some call it outdated, others misogynistic. We're talking about the dress code at government offices like the Department of Immigration, whose minister, Brent Simonet, recently stressed the need for people to be dressed in respectable clothing. Well, local activists did not take too kindly to such comments, charging that they predominantly target women. Well, here's what Press Secretary Anthony Newbold had to say when questioned on the issue. The Department of Immigration um and the people responsible for registering people to vote have an obligation to make sure that that happens. People register to vote. Anybody with an immigration matter has to have that matter dealt with. And so again, however that has to happen, the Department of Immigration will have to do that. When asked if he expects a reversal in the rule moving forward, Mr. Newbel said this. When you're going to do business in a government department as any other business, the business, the business, that particular business, determines the kind of people, not the kind of people, how it wants people to come into its business. That, that happens anywhere. Um, exactly what that is, that's on a specific department. Mr. Newbold says ultimately the decision to allow or prohibit individuals from dressing a certain way 
is up to cabinet. Five drug suspects taken into custody. Officers of the Drug Enforcement Unit were on patrol over in Grand Bahama when they spotted and stopped a silver Chrysler town and country van with two men. On them was over $15,000 in U.S. and Bahamian currency. As the suspects could not give a satisfactory reason for the money, they were arrested. This is another man was picked up at a home on John Rutt Lane, Hudson Estates, after he was found with suspected marijuana. In the third and fourth incidents, two other males were taken in on the same charge. Our final story is up next. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.